individuals to unlock their potential for personal growth and discovery. Mm -hmm. With that, I will leave it with you. Thank you. I had one of the most exciting jobs in the whole world. I worked on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Not only did I do that, but I did it with student pilots. My job was to help the student pilot strap into the aircraft. He closed the cockpit, and I stood there, and we got those engines turning, <laughs> just like when the Blue Angels fly over Jacksonville. Then I told him to hold on, and I went around his aircraft for the final check to make sure that aircraft was flight worthy, and then I saluted him and I told him to go. <laughs> and he went off the flight deck of the aircraft carrier for the very first time. Wow. And can you imagine that might be a little stressful? <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, it gets better. In 2004, I got orders to go to Iraq with my Chinook helicopter unit. I spent one year on the ground in a logistical support center fixing the Chinook helicopter. Okay, that might be a little stressful too. <laughs> Did you know that your body traps and holds stress? When I got home from Iraq, I went and I had LASIK surgery done. And I thought the doctor messed up my eyes because I got this little twitch in my eye. I went back to the doctor and I asked him about it. And he said, oh, that's stress. Ugh, I'm not at stress. I'm back from Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was in 2005, and my method of dealing with my stress didn't work. You know, our brains are wired for survival, and when we feel like our lives are out of control, we form habits that give us the perception of safety and survival. Well, the habits I formed were two bottles of wine a day, all the junk food I could possibly eat, I didn't want to exercise because the two bottles of wine and all the junk food <laughs> just wrecked my health. So I walked with a limp. I was 220 pounds. Now Julie knows I was dancing back then, but at the point when I started limping and I had no energy to live anymore, I even had to quit dancing. All the joy was being sucked right out of my life by the very habits I chose to find comfort and safety. I like to call that uncomfortably comfortable. And that is survival. You're just surviving, you're not thriving when you are living like that. And it got worse from there. Because I was 220 pounds and I walked with a limp, I could no longer fix aircraft. Mm -mm. Well, if you listened to my introduction, I was an aircraft electrician for 33 years. I was one of the first female aircraft electricians in a seagoing command in the U.S. Navy. I was one of two aircraft electricians on ground in Iraq in 2004. My whole identity in life was being a female aircraft electrician. And guess what I learned? This baby don't belong behind a desk. <laughs> and that's where I got set. Not only that, but I have a Master of Business, a Master of Business Administration and Human Resources and I've completed doctoral studies, I'm all but dissertation, in corporate change management. They put me in the security department doing fingerprints and ID cards. My brain was saying, I need to be challenged. My body was saying, oh my God, what did you do to me? <laughs> <laughs> and I was unhappy. Let me just say, my life sucked <laughs> because not only did my job suck, I wanted out, but my finances sucked. I owned a rental property. 
and the people weren't paying rent. And they were my best friend's kids. <laughs> what do you do with that, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was trying to get my dissertation and I was scheduled to do my research out on the Navy base where I worked and then the captain retired and the new captain wouldn't let me do my research. I was going to have to start my dissertation all over again. Did I say my life sucked? Yes. <laughs> well, what are you going to do when your life sucks? I was an expert in corporate change management. I worked in industry on assembly lines, helping them improve their processes with statistical process control. But I didn't know what to do to change myself. So I took all of that knowledge from all of those different sectors I was in, and I developed the six-step process of personal change. But I didn't know what to do with that either, really. Well, during all of this time, I wanted to start my own business. I decided that sitting behind a desk isn't for me. So I am going to make it myself. I'm going to do it myself so I could do what I want and, and enjoy my life. But I didn't know how to do that either. So I hired two coaches. Number one, I had to lose weight, which I did. I had already lost 20 pounds by now. I was introduced to aromatherapy, which helped calm my brain a little bit and helped me lose 20 pounds. I was so ecstatic and so happy about these essential oils and I wanted to tell everybody oh I got these wonderful products and I can help you lose weight <laughs> did, did, did that make you want to buy essential oils for me did I also tell you my life sucked <laughs> do you think that bad attitude from work and that bad attitude from sucking finances and that bad attitude from having to drop out of school had an effect on how I interacted with my potential clients and customers. Well, I'm here to tell you it absolutely did. Sure. People were buying essential oils, just not from me. I hired a business coach to try to get down to the bottom of why I couldn't sell these fantastic essential oils. And I hired a holistic health coach to help me break that 200 pound barrier. Now I'm here to tell you, they both gave me information. They both gave me two suggestions. And would you believe a business health a business coach and a holistic health coach suggested I do two of the very same things. Number one, they both suggested I get up from behind my desk at lunchtime, quit working through lunch, and take a walk. Okay, I'm still 200 pounds and walk with a limp, but I did it. If two different coaches from two different, completely different segments of life tell me to do it, there's got to be something about that. Mm -hmm. And I went out at lunch, <clears throat> I made it to the end of the block, turned around, walked up the stairs, and guess what? I felt a little better. It took a while, and eventually I was able to make it all the way around the block and I broke that 200 pound barrier. I kept doing this every day at lunch, out there on the Navy base. Eventually, I was able to make it from the flight line where I worked all the way to the St. John's River at the marina. And then, life really started to happen because I was out in nature. Nobody told me about this nature thing. I used to like it back before I got fat and unhealthy. It just really added to the whole process. Okay, I told you, they told me two things to do. The other thing, number two, they told me to meditate. Who, me? 
I got all this stuff running through my head. How can I say that? Like, um, <laughs> I'm here to tell you that if that was meditation, I still wouldn't be doing it. Meditation is so much more. I realized that my walks out to the marina, out in nature, looking at little baby armadillos play, watching the butterflies float by, looking at the St. John's River, they were all my forms of meditation. I got down to 150 pounds without even changing my lifestyle just by, well, I guess it was changing my lifestyle, getting up from behind my desk at lunchtime and taking a walk and clearing my mind. And when I got back to work, I was actually more productive. Instead of trying to break through that wall during lunch to get work done, the work just flowed to me after taking this walk. Now, I have had some success. My life didn't suck quite as bad. <laughs> My attitude was getting better. Well, the overachiever that I am, I started studying meditation. I started studying different ways to meditate because if just a walk through nature was that powerful, what else was out there? Well, we were deep into the pandemic at this point of time. So everything I experienced was on YouTube and Zoom and on the internet. But it still opened my eyes to new possibilities. Now I'd like to ask, because I like learning new things and I know I have a wealth of experience in the audience right now, so I'm going to ask Joanne first to get started. I remember you and Charlie went to a retreat with, was it John Dwyer? You mean or Joe Dispenza? Joe Dispenza. What was your favorite meditation that they did at that retreat? I liked the body electric. Can you just explain that in maybe 60 seconds? In 60 <laughs> seconds, my goodness. You, you, you imagine that you are part of the universe, and you are, but you uh, get yourself into that state so that you now, no one, no thing, nothing. And then you tune into your first chakra. He doesn't name the chakras. He calls them chakra one, chakra two. Center, and, one, center. <clears throat> center one, center two. But it's your first chakra, your second chakra, your third chakra. And you allow yourself to feel it and concentrate on it. And then you, if you concentrate on it enough, then the, all the part of that first chakra, which is your lower extremities, will all stop vibrating like you're electric. And then you imagine you dissolve into the universe again and you go into energy center number two. And you, then that all vibrates electric. Now you do one and two, and you go up the whole body that way. Amazing. Now it was that was amazing. That was my yes. Chakra alignment. <laughs> yeah. We heard about that at the beginning of yeah. this meeting. Yeah. Talked about <coughs> getting the brain and the heart working mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Chakra mm -hmm. alignment, another form of meditation. Julie and I were talking about sound bath earlier, and I am coming to that class next time it's here. Julie, <laughs> yes, come on, you can do it. Just 30 seconds, what does sound, how does sound bath make you feel? Well, if you allow it, <laughs> a lot of people are thinking through it. And like, oh, what is that? What do what what I do? How am I making that noise up there? You know? <laughs> and that's, if you, if you just, go into your own form of meditation mm -hmm. and let it let it carry you because there's different frequencies different yeah. vibrations from the, the the bowls and the flutes and depends on who's doing it john's doing it or eric is doing it. eric's a little heavier on john's heavier on the pan but anyway each instrument is, is is vibrating at a different frequency and if you allow yourself to kind yeah. of click in with that frequency then that takes you a place it helps you meditate it's well, a lot of different yeah. frequencies yeah <laughs> i love that and i was experiencing <clears throat> that on zoom and through youtube mm -hmm. 
And then I got an invitation to come right here to do Charlie's Soul Travel. How many people have done Charlie's Soul Travel? <laughs> if you haven't, I highly recommend it. And I am going to tell you why now. When Charlie invited me, I didn't know what to expect. That was my very first live meditation. And it, it, you could feel the electric in the room when we combined all of our energy together. And I experienced something very profound. Charlie got us to relax, and we were traveling to another planet. When we were traveling, I thought, this isn't working. I didn't think anything was going on. I was just sitting there waiting for something to happen. And then it did. I was in a pet adoption agency. Really? I travel all the way to another planet to a pet adoption agency. At that time I had three dogs, about 12 cats, and you name it, we had it. I didn't need another pet. Well, the universe thought otherwise because the universe gave me a new friend. Well, let me explain. Over here in this pet adoption agency, there were all these earth-like creatures. You know, they were bunny-like looking. If you look like kitty cats, there might have been something resembling a dog. And then over there, I saw it. And it saw me. Okay, picture this. This creature had long blonde flowing hair sticking out of a green and white striped shirt. He looked between, a uh, cross between a lapsa apso <laughs> and a penguin. <laughs> and he came, Mommy! His hair, for you youngsters out there, Phyllis Diller was a comedian <laughs> back in the 70s. His hair was like Phyllis Diller's. It, it just stood up on end and it was sparkling green with green fluorescent feathers. Wow. Mm, interesting. He came to me and he said, I'm Sparkle Feathers and I am your new friend. Uh -oh. And I am here to help you spread a message. And then he tickled me. <laughs> and we laughed. And we rolled. And we played. That was his message. His message was, I needed to have more fun. His message was that by having fun, I could go out and teach everybody what I have been learning. Well, at the end of the... Our, our play session. Sparkle Feather said, it's time to go back. I think Charlie must have been looking at his watch telling us it's time to come back. Because we went through this big tunnel. And it reminded me of tunnels in an airport. There were red and blue lights. I think that may have been my aircraft electrician background. We, we were coming through this. And then we got to this door. And then Charlie said, wake up. <laughs> Okay, for those of you who've heard this story before, was your experience anything like mine? <laughs> this meditation blew my mind and changed my life. And was the inspiration for my book, The Butterfly That Changed Everything. Mm. The butterfly came from a different venue way before I ever hired a coach, way before I ever lost any weight. I went or I found a hypnotist on Facebook and remember I told you my finances sucked. I wasn't out looking to pay anybody for a service. But and remember I told you the pet adoption thing I was up on New Year's Eve with our new puppy because the two dogs, the old dog and the new dog, wouldn't get along. 
So I stayed up with the new dog in the living room and I was scrolling Facebook. And Lauren said, share my new Facebook group with your friends. The person who brings in the most new members will win a hypnosis session. Who believes in faith? I was meant to get that session. I had nothing better to do that night but invite all my friends and help her build her Facebook group and I won the session. And in that hypnosis session, which is just another form of meditation but I didn't know it at the time. But during that session, I followed this butterfly as my inner child. I followed this butterfly like I was lost and the butterfly was leading me. The butterfly was leading me to more fun. And I didn't know it at the time. Before I ever got up at lunchtime to take these walks, my dogs were begging me to have fun like a dog. My dogs were begging me. But I got off of work and I was so drained and I opened my first bottle of wine and drank it. Then I took a nap so I could have dinner to wake up and or take a nap so I could have energy to get up and eat dinner and drink the second bottle of wine. Telling my dogs, leave me alone, I'm too tired. Well, fast forward. I've lost weight. I've learned to meditate. I'm taking lunchtime walks. Guess what came next? We started taking family walks around our property with the dogs. I would get home from work and instead of popping that cork on a bottle of wine, I go for a walk with my husband and my dogs. The butterfly effect. Not only did I start changing myself, but I started changing my husband and my dog. I had a 10 year old dog with arthritis. She lived another good three years just because that <coughs> butterfly told me to have fun. The butterfly effect is real. Yes, it is. When you change yourself, you change the world. Yes. And that motivated me to change myself more. And I told you that I developed the six-step process for personal change. <clears throat> Before I even met this butterfly, I wanted to write a book. But I didn't know how. And actually, the book I wanted to write, I just wanted to write about my essential oil so people would buy more stuff from me. <laughs> but then, going through this six-step process of clearing my mind, calming, self-reflection, figuring out the root cause, making changes, adjusting, and then continuing on. Just going through this process over and over and over the course of four years, I realized that this is the book I needed to write. But I still didn't have the self-confidence to get it published. I needed external validation. <coughs> and I hired a publisher who told me, you know what, or not a publisher, but an yeah. uh, editor. And she said, you know what, you're on to something here. This is good. Make these changes and you have a book. So that's my first book, How to Start Your Own Personal Change Journey, even if you don't know where to start. Well, now I told you I met this butterfly who said, have fun. Then I met Sparkle Feathers and he told me to have fun. I got this idea. I should write a book and make it fun. How to start your own personal change journey evolved into the butterfly that changed everything, which is my six step process of personal change based in a fairy tale. And Sparkle Feathers is the star. And 
The co-star is Princess Francie, my inner child. When I connected with my inner child through a meditation, that's when miracles started to happen. Because I started to do things like that seven-year-old child did before life started to happen. That seven-year-old child that wasn't told, Do you know, you'd be prettier if you would just lose weight. That seven-year-old child whose parents were still married. That seven-year-old child whose father was in her life on a daily basis. That seven-year-old child that didn't have a care in the world, that didn't even comprehend that people were taking care of me. And at eight years old, my dad didn't pay child support. I was being raised by a single mother. And that's when everything started to fall apart. If you haven't connected with your inner child, find a meditation to get you there. Find that seven-year-old that you were before life started to happen to you. Now I want to take you on a little journey. But first, we've been sitting for a long time now, so everybody just shake it off. Get up, shake it off. <laughs> or do a shimmy. Get that blood flowing a little bit. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to relax. Okay. Find a comfortable spot. And take a deep breath. Another deep breath. Another. And we're going to release some tension. Make a fist. Squeeze your hands really, really tight. Make a fist. And then shake it off. Go up your arms to your biceps and your triceps. Tense them up really good. Okay. And shake it off. Hands up your shoulders. Yeah. Wiggle them around, shake them off. And your neck, is your neck tense? Roll it around, relax it. Go down your back, tense up your upper back. Feel your spine. Shake it off. Let that energy travel down to your lower back and tense it up. And now relax. And our biggest muscle, the butt, go ahead, tense it up. Tense it up. And shake it off. And let that energy travel down to your legs. Down to your calves, past your knees, your ankles, and when it gets to your feet, wiggle your toes. Now imagine you have roots growing through your toes, attaching you to the ground. These roots are coming around your feet and grounding you to Mother Earth. Feel that energy flow up your body from the earth. And as it goes up your back and your spine, release all tension. That energy is up in your heart chakra now. Up in the throat chakra and the head. These roots are reaching up to the sky 
Now imagine over your head there's a bright white light. Drink up that light. Let that light flow through you. Let that light flow, flow through the, the vines, the roots that just grew up through your feet from the ground. And let that light fill you with love, protection, and joy. It's coming down to the heart chakra. Feel your heart chakra filling with that light. That light's going down through your spine and down your legs. Now picture the place where you are happiest on earth. Where are you the most comfortable? Where, where were you when you were a child when you felt perfectly safe and secure? Have you found your child yet? Go ahead, shake hands with your child. Give him a big hug. Let's take a minute and play. <coughs> Remember this feeling. child wants to tell you it's time to have more fun in your life. It's time to let the past be the past. What was your favorite game? Your child wants you to do this again. <coughs> time to come back now. Your child's there for you whenever you want him. Your child is waiting. Just get in this relaxed state again. Go back to where you felt safe and secure and your child is there for you. And when I count to three, You'll be back in this room. One, two, three. Anybody want to share what they felt? You were giggling all the time. Of course I was. <laughs> well, you have to understand, I am part Therian and other kids, which means in my human form, I'm human, but in my other form, a part of me is an angel, a dragon, a lion, a lizard, stuff that you see around here. The other kin is more of the mythological, but the therianthropy that I, my, I encompass is a cat, more like a lion, sometimes like a chimera with little, with little bits of other cats and a house cat. So in my world, it's more like a part of it is futuristic, but then there's so much nature. But I also am a furry that's into anthropomorphic art, half human, half animal. And that's how my inner child likes that, because I used to watch a lot of shows like that. Like Sonic the Hedgehog, Chip and Dale, <coughs> Tailspin, all that. I used to be a Disney fan. And I have certain characters like that that live in my world like that. And they're all magical, they're all Human, but some of them are just humanoid, while other are magical, and I have all the face and stuff over there too that also match it. That's why I laugh because my inner child likes to shift and stuff and play around, while my adult self is kind of like the guardian. But that's what I've been. I felt a separation, but now we're together. 
and ever since this eclipse started happening, I felt so much separation. I had to clear so much of it, but now there's room. Now we are one. But thank you. You and I are very much alike because during my first hypnosis, every time she cleared a block, I giggled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did anybody else have an experience they want to share? Yes, I will. My inner child was it in school. So apparently I connect with school a lot. But I didn't know that about myself. So it was very positive. Awesome. Julie? The more I uh, meditate or just live, the more my inner child comes out. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> one of these days... I'm I've known Julie 18 years. You know, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the inner child is... All, I have to control the inner child most of the time. It's like, okay, settle down. You know that. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? Does anyone have a question for me? Well, thank you so much for listening to me. I really enjoy sharing that story.